Hello princesses! Today I'm going to be talking about the Tony Molly Perfect Lips Rouge Glosses. I picked these up for my full face of Tony Molly because I have actually been missing wearing glosses. There have been so many products that are coming out that are matte or at least soft matte, but in general I actually prefer a glossy or moisturizing finish because my lips are so dry. The matte products actually make them look even more dry and they start to look like wrinkly prunes and um, yeah it's just not flattering for me. Whereas a gloss makes my lips look a little bit fuller and a lot younger. <laughs> and yes I could fix that with having lip fillers but I actually play the flute for like a living in a career and I don't want to mess with my lips because that's just a bad idea and I'm not actually sure if that would work or not but I'm not willing to risk it. And my lips are wrinkly because of that because of the way you play basically you kind of like everything is like quite tight and it does make your lips more wrinkly unfortunately it's kind of like smokers yeah not a great side effect for the career but it's not that bad <laughs> i don't think that these glosses are particularly new but i haven't tried them before and they did have a really nice color range this is probably the most orange shade that they have and it's kind of more like I would say a coral colour, so I was like, okay, no oranges, that's a good start for me. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen any of my cosmetic swatches before, oranges just don't look good on me, and it's kind of difficult in K-Beauty because there's almost always an orange shade, and it's almost always like bright carrot orange, and I just, oh, mmm, just really accentuates the yellowness of my skin. <laughs> So the product description says, a moisturizing lip tint with buildable coverage and excellent color payoff that lasts long. Provides vivid color, creating shining lips with volume feeling and forms an oils film to keep smooth and moist lips. A high coloring net formula creates vivid color with a transparent shiny gloss without clumps on the lips. Fresh Herb Complex creates a moisturizing oil film on dry lips to prevent evaporation of moisture, soft lip care. These glosses have really elegant packaging, but just a quick warning, if you leave them uncapped and lying on their side, the gloss will leak out everywhere and stain things. I learned that the hard way. They come with a doe foot applicator, which applies the gloss easily. There are five shades in this collection, and I was very pleased to see that there was no orange shade. I do enjoy the inclusion of a brown toned shade, but it's not that pigmented in comparison to the other colored glosses. Red Pleasure is a vibrant red shade. This is the darkest shade in the collection, but if I apply too much of it, I start to get a ring of color when I rub my lips together, which isn't cute. The best looking application is a little bit sheerer, but for me, it still looks really pretty. This shade doesn't last long. It looks good for about an hour, but any longer than that, the color starts to fade from the center quite badly. Gloss update number one. I just finished filming um, the videos for today including a hair frequently asked questions um, and this is what the gloss looks like after half an hour um, but this is red pleasure and you can see that the gloss shine is still there but the color is starting to go quite pink it was quite red to start with so that is gloss after half an hour I'm about to go have coffee and a snack so we'll check in after that so it has been about an hour now and this is what the gloss looks like so like I said it wears out in the center and the outside still stays kind of glossy. Um, I was eating and drinking but like, I don't know, I had like three biscuits and a cup of coffee so not that good. Also I know it's kind of orange, it's because the white backgrounds look white with the orange, oranger lights. It's just that I look much more orange also. So at this point I would usually reapply but um, yeah, no, not today. I'm gonna take it off and put another one on so that is pretty much the longevity of the glosses, like I wouldn't walk around looking like this, so I would either reapply from here or put something else on. There you go. Sensual Scarlet is a pretty neon peach shade. This shade is the most vibrant out of the five, but I would definitely call it peach or coral rather than scarlet, which would usually be a very vibrant red, sort of similar to Red Pleasure. This shade is quite sheer despite being a fairly dark colour in the tube, and I can definitely see my lips underneath. I do really like how shiny these glosses are too. Some glosses I've tried have only been sticky and kind of matte, which defeats the purpose of wearing a gloss. After Pink is a sweet candy pink filled with glitter. 
This is one of the shades that I wear quite often. I think that the colour is so pretty and it's fairly pigmented too. Again, I can't apply too much, otherwise it does slide around for a fair amount, but even a thinner layer does colour my lips quite nicely. This shade has a little better longevity than Red Pleasure, as it's more similar to my natural lip shade. I can wear this for about two hours without reapplication. Sepia Coral is a brown toned nude with glitter. This is such a pretty shade, but it's just not one that I reach for. Looking at it here, I think that it looks so pretty and it suits me well, but in real life, it's just not one that jumps out to me. This shade also has the same glitter as After Pink, but it isn't very visible on the lips. I find these glosses easy to apply and reapply throughout the day. The doe foot applicator works very well to pick up just enough of the product and distribute it evenly. Nude Apricot is a clear gloss tinted with orange. This is a lovely clear gloss and I wear this over lipstick shades to give my lips a little shine. I do find that although the glosses wear off within about 2 hours, I can still feel the stickiness on my lips for up to 8 hours without reapplication. Although they are very sticky, I do find them to be quite moisturising for the entire day and I don't feel like I need to apply a lip balm over the top which is really quite nice. All of the shades have quite a strong cake or vanilla scent and taste, which I personally don't mind, but if you're not a fan of strong or very sweet scents and tastes in your cosmetics, then you may not like these glosses. Surprisingly, I have enjoyed wearing these glosses quite a lot. My least favourite shades are Sepia Coral as well as Sensual Scarlet because I just don't find them to be very exciting. I think that they look fine on me, I just... I don't really reach for them at all. My favourite shade has to be After Pink or maybe Nude Apricot. Of course Nude Apricot is the most versatile because it's the clear gloss and it can go over the top of other lip colours. But After Pink is a very becker colour and I have been wearing it for the other videos that I have filmed today. I changed to Red Pleasure so that I could do a little bit more of the longevity testing on it and take some footage for you guys. But I think After Pink probably gets the most wear for me. Red Pleasure, although I think it looks quite nice now, I just find it too hard to maintain. I would rather wear a red lipstick with Nude Apricot on top as the gloss because I find that that, for me, lasts longer. As for the glossy texture, these are a little bit sticky, um, but they're not actually that bad. Of course, I would, if it was windy, I would tie my hair up so it doesn't get into the gloss or just like back like this a little bit, um, but I haven't had any sticky issues. They do have quite a strong taste. Um, for me, it tastes like cake, although I think that the, the proper scent would probably be vanilla. It is quite strong. I don't find that after um, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes I can personally taste or smell it, but I enjoy really, really sweet tastes and scents, so it may just be that I'm like more tolerant to the scent and taste. So if you're not tolerant of fragrances in your cosmetics, then these are probably not going to be good products for you. These are also eight US dollars each. So there is not actually that much product in there, although I don't actually know the mill size because they're not written on here, or if they are, they are in Korean, which I cannot read. And I honestly think that $8 is a little bit steep for what you're getting here. I would say maybe $5 US dollars would be fair. I, I just don't think that they're worth $8 US dollars as much as I do like them. I already have them, so I'm not going to get rid of them, um, but I probably wouldn't buy them again. If you guys have any gloss suggestions for me, then I would absolutely love to hear them, especially if they are a little bit more reasonably priced for what you are getting to. But overall, I think that this collection is really lovely. If you have the money to spend on it and you don't mind the price tag of eight US dollars, I know it's not actually that much, but like for a gloss and what you're getting, it is a little bit more expensive than a lot of other glosses on the market right now in the K-beauty world. They would average more for like five dollars, which is what I think that these probably should have been marked as. And I did see some stores selling them for about 10 US dollars and I definitely don't think they're worth that price. But they smell and taste delicious to me. There is a beautiful color range and they work really, really well. You just have to reapply the darker colors, that's all. So overall, I actually do quite like them. Thank you guys so much for watching this review and I will see you next time. Bye.